those of you who haven't seen me before, my name is Ted and I work in Tinkerbox. Uh, today will be a serious talk, okay? It will have some code in it. Uh, hopefully you can see it. I was hoping the, the projected screen would be bigger, but I can also read it out to you so you can follow along. So the name of the talk today is uh, Open Sesame. Uh, I'm going to touch on the dangers of the Open URI module from Ruby and uh, how it can be used for remote code execution. Uh, so the background to this talk is uh, one of our junior developers came to me with uh, an exception in one of our projects that uh, he couldn't really make sense out of, he couldn't find out where, where this was coming from. Uh, so he came to, to ask me about it. Uh, the exception looked something like this. I don't know if you can see it, uh, but essentially it says no such file or directory, uh, which seems, seemed very strange to him because he wasn't doing anything like this in, in the project. Um, but it turns out he was using a gem called Refile. I don't know if anyone has used it. Uh, essentially it's a gem for uploading files. Uh, and this gem also gives you the option to enter a URL to a remote file and the gem will essentially download it for you and then upload it again so you get it on your own server. Uh, but obviously this error wasn't coming from refile. Uh, so I went into the refile source code and, and checked what was going on. Uh, and it turns out they were using this open URI module from the Ruby core to, to facilitate this uh, feature where you can put in a remote URL. Uh, so let's see what the documentation says about the open URI. So it, it literally says open URI is an easy to use wrapper for net HTTP, net HTTPS and net FTP. This is everything it says in the description. Obviously, this error wasn't coming from, from OpenURI either. So, I started wondering, how does this really work? How does OpenURI do this magic? And the answer to that is monkey patching. Uh, so, what, what exactly does OpenURI monkey patch? Uh, it turns out it monkey patches the kernel method open. But obviously when you do this, you don't only get the, the stuff that you put in there, you get the stuff that was there in the first place as well. Uh, so let's move to the documentation on kernel.open. Firstly, it says, if the path provided does not start with a pipe character, treat it as the name of a file to open. So this kind of gives some hints that maybe it does something more. What if, what if it is a pipe character? Uh, it continues, if path starts with a pipe character, a sub-process is created, connected to the caller by a pair of pipes. Okay, we're starting to get somewhere. Uh, but there is more in there. If the command following the pipe is a single minus sign, Ruby forks and this sub-process is connected to the parent. Uh, and already here, uh, I mean, I'm no security expert, but it sounds like you could do something like a fork bomb to uh, create a denial of service attack on, the, on anything using this. Uh, but actually it gets even better. What if it's not a minus sign? Uh, if the command is not a minus sign, the sub-process runs the command. So this is why I think the big revelation that, okay, this is, this is probably not a good thing. Uh, especially if you're using this with some, any kind of user input. Uh, so the reaction then became, okay, let's, let's go and break something. And the most obvious candidate, of course, is the gem refile. Uh, so I'm gonna show you guys a, a short demo of something that I made up using the refile gem. Uh, so I created a very extremely simple application that is essentially a bare bones Rails application with refile in it and uh, an input field that takes this remote URL that it allows you to input. Uh, so this is this is how refile did this. 
at the time. Uh, maybe you don't see it from here, but they basically call open that has been monkey patched by OpenURI. They pass in a URL uh, parameter. And it turns out this URL parameter is just an unescaped string from the user, whatever they put in the input field. Uh, so this sounds like a, like a recipe for success to me. So I'm going to show you the demo. Hopefully it works well now. So this is the very makeshift uh, Rails application that has refile in it, and it has an input field for the remote URL. So we know that if we put a pipe character, we can make it execute a command. So let's see what happens. Say that we want to echo hello world. Uh, so does anyone think that refile will uh, take the output of this command and upload it to S3? The answer is actually no. Uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but what happens in refile is once it read your remote file, uh, it accesses some meta information on it. But we co because we used it to execute uh, a command, the result doesn't have this meta information. So it just throws an exception. Uh, so this is rather boring, I would say. Because we need some way to, to get this information out that we can access by running commands on the, on the application. Uh, so I did something else. I created another makeshift Rails application that basically has a single model. Uh, uh, it routes the create action and takes some JSON and just stores it in the database. And the, the root URL shows you the lost result. So obviously it says nothing here yet because uh, we haven't done anything yet. But now we're going to use this application together with the refile to, to make something interesting. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to do the echo hello world. Uh, but we're going to format this to the format that is expected by my other application. And then obviously, because this is, is essentially just bash commands, I can just pipe the result from this into, say, a curl. Uh, and send a post request to my other application. So again, you're getting the same exception here. Uh, let's see, hopefully I got something in my other application. All right. Uh, seems like it's working. So let's see what else we can do here. Uh, just writing some text to our other application seems kind of boring. So, let's see if we can find out what user this is running as. Okay, getting the same exception. All right, it turns out we can actually see what user we're running as. Uh, so let's try something more exotic, like traversing the directory tree and reading some files. Same old exception. All right, it seems like I've read a file on the remote server and I've sent the results to my own uh, catcher application. So you can see there's a bunch of stuff here that I read from the etc slash 
password file. Uh, so actually, just after I discovered this, uh, I went to Ruby Tea Party in um, in Trade Gecko, and Mo there he said that okay, you can never do that in Heroku because probably the user is shut down. Uh, but actually, this demo that I just showed you is running on Heroku already, so it turns out he was wrong. Uh, so I actually raised this to Heroku, but it it, it seems like their entire uh, security idea uh, revolves around dino isolation. So as long as you get owned in your own dino, they don't really care. So the interim solution to this uh, was the following. Let's just sanitize the remote uh, URL field. Uh, so we're using the remote URL module. Uh, we're parsing the URL and we're calling valid on it. Uh, if it's not valid, we just remove it. Uh, it turns out this is only slightly less unsafe. Because uh, for some reason, the string HTTP colon slash dot dot slash etc slash password is, is still valid. So if for some reason you can plant a folder in, in the application named HTTP colon, uh, you can still exploit this. Uh, and actually, this is the approach that Carrier Wave is using at the moment. Uh, so the real solution is obviously you should update your refile now if you're using it. Mm. I sent an email to the maintainer and it turns out he's a really nice guy. Uh, he replied to me within hours and he patched this within a week, I think. Uh, so if you're using refile, make sure you're using 0.5.4, which is the latest version. Right, that's all. So previously they used, I think, REST client. Mm -hmm. So he just reverted the code back to using that. Okay. But 0 0.5.0 0 to 0 0.5.3 is still unsafe if you're using this feature. Okay. Right, thank you very much. Thanks again.